Okay. So I'm hoping somewhere along the lines it's saved in my fucking phone somewhere. <laughs> it should have. It's down to 17 minutes yeah. of time, so I'll just have to um, find it. But yeah, uh, the head there's... coaching searches aren't easy. Yeah, it, it's not like there are great candidates out there left and right, like for the NFL. And the thing that irritates me is a lot. I I don't get why people still do it. <laughs> Everyone is like, oh, we should get the the Patriots offensive coordinator or the Patriots defensive coordinator. It's like. Do you see how often that happens? No. Point, point me. No. Point me in the direction where one of those head coaches has been a success at. Uh, I'll wait. Uh, it doesn't happen. Never. We've seen. We even seen Josh McDaniels fall on his face in Denver. Mm-hmm. You've seen Romeo Cornell fell in, in Cleveland. Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Saw Charlie Weiss fell in Notre Dame. And some people say, "Oh no, he had a pretty good team." That wasn't even his players. It wasn't his. That first year he was there was not his players. That True. was uh. Ah, oh, damn, I can't remember his name. It was the, the black head coach that they had. Um, I'll remember it later. Yeah. But it was his it was, players. It's not relevant. <laughs> yeah, and it was that was when they had Brady Quinn. Yeah. And Charlie Weiss didn't recruit Brady Quinn, so he didn't recruit Jeff Samarja. Like, that was the other coach that did that. That's, that's Some people uh, forget <laughs> Jeff Samarja was a badass receiver for Notre Dame. Oh, dude. yeah. You know, and that's, that's one of those uh, uh, that's one of those situations where you have uh, John John Harbaugh Coming in after uh, uh, after Mike Singletary built up the Niners and taking credit for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that literally. That's my that's Mike Singletary's team that went to the Super Bowl. That was that wasn't John Harbaugh just filled in and said, "Hey, rah rah, guys, I'm one of the boys." <laughs> but that was legit Mike Singletary's decision making to draft all of Jim those Harbaugh. players. Can Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh. So many Harbaughs. Uh, fuck the Harbaughs. But, uh, they're they're fucking overhyped. Let me let me ask you something. If if Harbaugh was so good at being a coach, how come he how come he couldn't do it as a quarterback for the Colts? Man, they almost had that that hell Mary as oh, the Steelers. And, and the Steelers are oh, like, nah, I don't think so. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. But you know what? It's the, the th- another thing too is the the Patriots defensive coordinator. He's got a job with the Lions. Did they what? hire him? Which one, Cornell? No, the the recent, the one, recent right, one, the one that's their D coordinator right now. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. got hired by the Lions. Lions. Yeah. But it's another one of those things. Like, dude, do you remember how shitty that defense was in the beginning of the year? Like those first like five weeks or something. Yeah. I tell you what, I think happened is <laughs> that Belichick took over like the play calling and he yeah. made the adjustments to the defense. Yeah. Or he's the one that told the D coordinator, like, look, this is this what is you, what need, you to need to do. do. You're fucking this up. You need to switch this, this, and this. Yep. Make it happen. And that's what happened. And then, oh, now, oh, the D coordinator, he's a genius. They're like, all right, go, go ahead. ahead. Go that down shit. that route, dude. Yeah. It, it's, you know what? It's, the Patriots have good players. Not just good, but they have great players. So don't show me a, a coordinator who can score points with, with Tom Brady. Like, <laughs> big yeah. wild. That's like the coordinator that was scoring points with Peyton Manning. It's like, Peyton Manning is the offensive coordinator. He doesn't so, need a coach. Literally. Yeah, I don't want to hear yeah. that shit. Like, Show me the guy who is like, oh man, that team's gonna suck, like, uh, and and then whoa, hey, you know their offense actually finished within the top ten to fifteen, and they're supposed to suck, you know, like the, like the Jets were supposed to fucking not win a game this year, pretty much what everybody thought. Oh my god, the way they dismantled the team. Yeah, and they actually did a lot better than people thought they were. I think they won was like five or six games or something like that. I was and it's to not like team. that's great or anything. But, but still, it's, it's a lot better than what it was, a lot was better. expected. That's those are the coordinators you should be going after. The ones that do more with less yeah. than you know, oh, doing great with great players. It's like, yeah, oh, that's uh, that's that's it makes absolutely zero sense. Yeah. It's dumb. It's the dumbest thing to ever fucking think about. Now I, like I get that. it. Like okay, if they're breaking records, then yeah, that's a different sure. story. That's a different story. Yeah. That's just it, great coaching along with great talent. Yeah, just. Elevated to a completely different level. Yeah, but when you're doing what you're supposed to do, it's like, uh, you, you know. yeah, you look at it and it's like, well, it's expected, and yeah. that's the thing, it's expected. You know, you, you 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 want you want to go after the coordinators that are doing absolutely great with teams that you didn't expect at yeah. all. Like for example. If I would look at a coordinator, I would look at the Chargers defensive coordinator easily because that's a team where no even they started 0 4, 
They start 0 4, and then they're like one game outside the playoffs. And a lot of it's attributed to their defense. Yeah, defense is good. I mean, even just outside of Joey Bosa, they yeah. were, they were kicking ass. They're just whooping it all all day, every day, up and down the field. I mean, and if you want to go one step further, go to the obvious and look at the Jaguars' uh, entire organization. Dude, three years ago, they were the laughing stock of defenses. And then now they're one of the elite. Dude, just the last few years, period, man. Yeah. They were like... Nobody... I mean, they're finishing, you know, in the, in the bottom five of the league. The top every five pick year. damn near every year, you know. it's. But this year, they, they finally turned it around. I mean, yeah. they, they added some more pieces on defense through free agency. And it freaking showed, man. It's, oh, easily. They, they found it... What goes really well is like when you find an identity like that, like a uh, to have a top level defense. If you have a dominant running game, like who gives a shit who your quarterback is? Really, yep. like those two things go hand in hand. If you can have a top level running back who can get you the touchdowns and grind out the clock, yeah. And you got a defense that's just kicking offenses off the field left and right, three and out, three and out, turnover. They're never on the field because you're running the ball like crazy with success. Yep. And your defense is stopping. That's the Jags formula right now. Yeah. And right now, they just don't want Blake Bortles to fuck up. Like, dude, just don't fuck up. That's why they're not letting them throw a lot right no. now. No. So, they, yeah, they're trying to keep it minimum. Dude, Leonard Fournette is the workhorse of that fucking oh, team. Oh, yeah. Easily. It's, Easily. That's a for, That's why I was thinking that would be a good formula for the Browns. They have a pretty good... They, no, they have, a, they have a good defensive line right now. Yeah. They still need a couple of pieces, like in the secondary... Uh, and they, they got, was it uh, Jamie Collins? Jamie Collins. From the Patriots. Yep. They got him last year. They get add a couple of more pieces, like in the secondary, turn their defense into a really top-level D. Yeah. And I would, going on, on kind of with what you're talking about, uh, this game we want to start playing called Rebuilding the Browns. Yeah. Where oh, man. We're going to, pick by pick, you know, in the draft, we're going to say who we would have took. Oh, yeah. And you got to do it as, as the pick's go into place mm-hmm. because if you try and switch it up later like when you know when everyone's been picked like the hindsight like that's the thing. thing like you don't know yeah. when someone's gonna grab like Minka Fitzpatrick or something yeah. like that you don't know when someone's gonna grab Saquon Barkley mm-hmm. or, or one of these quarterbacks Yeah, I was the Browns my my early uh, vote for what I think they should do uh, we'll get more details about how this game will work later yeah. but um, I would probably go Saquon Barkley and then with that fourth pick, depending on what quarterback's there, I might go with one of the quarterbacks. If not, then I'd probably go Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, if Darnold is there, then maybe I pass. If Rosen is there, then I probably go much. Rosen. Yeah. And because they do need a quarterback, but at the same time, this is that formula I'm talking about. I think they got some pieces. Yeah, I know. Zero and sixteen, so it's hard to say. Like, oh, there's. There's no pieces right now, but they do have. There is a little something there on that D line. Yeah, yeah, especially I like their on the D defense. lines. Yeah, uh, they, they're very good at shutting down the run. Yes, um, and th- and that that that's one of like the the biggest things is like teams that go zero and sixteen, you, you easily overlook a lot of uh, the aspects that they have that make them good, and the run defense is probably one of the best in the league. Even though they've given up scores, you got to look at where they've given up scores at. Yeah. And, where they give them scores is easily in the passing game. You know they don't yeah. have a lot of safety help, and a lot of safety help that they do have, they're just completely inept at their position. And then uh, they just no got rid of uh, Joe Hayden this year oh too. To the worst decision ever. I'll tell you that right now. Worst decision ever. Even though I wouldn't consider him a top five corner this year, he's still easily a top ten. They well based off of what they had. I mean, I'm sure he's glad he got out of there. You know. Yeah. But. It's you know, it, he's better than what they have. He's way better than what they have. The crazy yeah. thing is, you know, what happens with Josh Gordon now? What do you do that's, with that situation? That's going to be interesting because they have Josh Gordon, and the one of the things that you look at, even though he played very little, is that he's an athletic freak of nature. Yeah, I no, would no want what I would want to get rid of him <laughs> to try and if you can get a decent pick for him, make it happen. Just because you don't know if he's even going to stay on the field, but at the same time, like when you have nothing, it's hard to to give give that up yeah. for, for something that may not even help you that much down the road. It's yeah. like it might be better just to hold on to him. So if you do get a rookie quarterback, 
at least you got somebody that could help him out, even if it's just for a little while. This could help build his confidence and oh, easy. make him into a better quarterback until you do find <laughs> another receiver. Yeah. Um, and, th- and that's one of the things is like, l- let's say they do get Josh Rosen, then guess what? Josh Gordon just elevated himself into the top 15. Yeah. Easily. I think he'll, he'll have to stay. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they'll get rid of him after that. No, I don't I, know. I, you would hope that he would stay clean after that. It's like, dude, oh, I got to. Legit quarterback and like they have hella draft picks this year. Yeah, hella draft picks. So they can. They Let me tell you something. They don't. This the Browns, so they don't have room to mess up. But they have a little bit of wiggle room to kind of take take whatever they want, pretty much. Yeah, I would. If I was them, I would build my team with solid pieces. Yeah, I don't even think I would gamble on anyone. You know, sometimes you're in a position where you can gamble and you can be like. You can take this player coming off of an injury because you have so many extra picks. It's like, dude, go, go with the shirt. You thing. have an O and sixteen team. If you could just get a legit building block, like someone, yeah. you don't have to always hit a home run with your draft picks. I think that's what a lot of teams try and do. Yeah. If you if you get to a point in the draft where you're like, you know what, I think this guy will make the team and he'll be solid for us. I think if they can get some solid guys to mix in with, you know, trying to hit a couple of home runs. Like your first round, those first round picks, the first and fourth picks should be a freaking home run, you yeah. know, or a damn triple or something, something. You know? like you need to get legit production <laughs> some kind of, some kind of play out of that first pick yeah. and fourth pick. Oh yeah. So, and you know what, if I know there have been talks about the Giants possibly wanting to move up to that one pick to take one of the quarterbacks with the Browns, if I was the Browns, I'd probably let them do it. I'd probably, depending on what they're offering. Yeah. You know, if they offer something big, if they offer another first rounder next year, then that would probably be move something back. Like, sure. I mean, it's only a few spots. One pick, one, one spot. We got one spot to move, but for the number one overall, dude, teams will they'll, they'll give, give up it. more. So yeah, it, it all depends on what they can get out of it. If they can get a one, I think you should probably do it. Um, if you get a a two or something, I'd probably do it. And then in that scenario, say they take Rosen, I'd probably take Barkley, number two. Yeah. And then four, maybe Sam Darnold. We'll see, we'll see how he does with the workouts. Or I could go with you know the, the Minka Fitzpatrick thing that I've been thinking about. So I know it doesn't address the quarterback situation. <laughs> but still, but if, if, you need to, uh, if you need to look at building a team, that's the key is you're building a team. You're not I would, building a player. I would go sign one. Yeah. I, I would go... I would give Kirk Cousins his money, dude. If I was yeah. him. Like, if he's willing, to if come he's willing to, to come, because that that's the other thing is like, if you can uh, with this draft, like there are some good quarterbacks, but of course there's questions about them. If you can avoid drafting one and sign like Kirk Cousins, I'd freaking do it, you know, easy, and just make it happen and just save those picks towards other assets that have fewer question marks. That's why I think the Niners are going to do pretty well, is because they. It looks like they appears they fixed their quarterback situation without having to burn their first round pick on yeah. it. That and not just that, people thought that they were gonna have to trade up to go after Rosen or Donald. Yeah, now they don't have to. Now the fact got... they don't have to, they can sit there and take best player available. Oh yeah. Um, because you look at it, Jimmy Garoppolo as a starter, undefeated, undefe- with the Niners undefeated. Yeah. But you combine Niners and the play he had with the Patriots, it's like eight zero, right? Because he started three games with the Patriots when Brady was oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's 8-0, right. technically, as a starter. So yeah. the Niners are, they're, they're fine. They're At quarterback, I think they've solved their quarterback issues. Just, I think, you got to, all their, their some, some people like to call it draft capital. I think it just makes <laughs> them sound smart. Yeah. <laughs> you, you invest all your draft capital, and but I think if they... Use the majority of their draft picks. Yeah, I know they need help on defense. Fuck that right now. Yeah. Unless unless a top pl- level player falls, use those picks. Invest in Jimmy Garoppolo, dude. Yeah. Give him a fucking top end offensive line. Give him some uh, weapons to work with an offense. Yep. You know, I, I me personally, I probably I would let Carlos Hyde go. I'd let him walk. I, I would um, too. You can draft a running back in the mid rounds. Get offensive line help. Get a receiver. Like first four picks, dude. I'm probably burning all on offense. Like, yeah. This is the direction our franchise is going. He's looked good. We're we're protecting him. Like, yeah. I think that's what you got to do. 
Because yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of teams fail their young quarterbacks by not giving them that support that he needs, you know? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at uh, you look at all the Super Bowl winners of this decade, and uh, even though there's been like really big defensive <clears throat> plays, and I've always stood by this, every every Super Bowl except for maybe two, I think, this entire decade, well, maybe one, this entire decade has all like changed course with a defensive play. But you look at all the teams; they're all offensive minded. Every single mm-hmm. one of them: Patriots, Steelers, Packers. Uh, even the Seahawks, even though they're a defensive team and they've won a lot on defense, they could light you up on offense just as easily. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you have that, like a good quarterback in play, and if they put enough pieces around them, yeah. free agents won't want to go there. Free agents will go play for a quarterback. Like, oh man, they got master quarterback. Yeah, I'll yeah, go that's play for them. Yeah. So, you know. Because, like, right now, there's no quarterback that's willing to go to the Browns. and That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I'm not a big Kirk Cousins fan, <laughs> but I would pay him the money just to freaking plug that hole, dude. Yeah, and, and it's got to be a lot know. because you look at it, and if the money is almost equivalent to what the Redskins are paying, then he's just going to stay with the Redskins. Yeah, He's not going to go to the Browns for what? To end his career? Now... That's you know that that's gonna be the tough pitch is trying to you know get him to jump over there. You're gonna <laughs> jump have to, ship. You might have to tell him what you're gonna do with your picks. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah, no. So because no. it end, it ends up you know just fluttering away. But I think they should, you know. Yeah, just give them all the world and build everything around them. Yeah, build absolutely everything around them. Yeah, just go highway. But since we have a few seconds left, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think, and we'll be back next week. Yeah, sounds good to me.